Good morning and welcome to Thursday morning prayer on this beautiful sunny morning but we're having sh snowstorms rather interesting and our four doves are here perched singing and listening to this lovely music good morning all and they're they're looking with their heads pentive as much as to say what is going on in here but it's lovely to welcome Sue and Jan and whoever else is here not logged in you're welcome so I'm going to light our little candle this morning and we're going to dedicate our prayers for one of our community sister Elizabeth in America whose son Larry and his partner Kelly are experiencing the dark night of the soul as they await the outcome of their court appearance today and poor Elizabeth being his mom is really going through a bad time so I'm dedicating morning prayer for our dear sister Elizabeth and her son and partner and also for dear sister Eliz sister Eleanor who's been trying to support all three of them so we light this light and we give thanks to a loving God, a God of mercy and a God of compassion who forgives us and who invites us to surrender our heart and to place our trust in the mercifulness of God who triumphs and reigns over all our adversity. So now let us be still as we come into the presence of love because God is love. We begin with our prologue for this Thursday morning and it reads, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and, excuse me, reverence to the holy pure and saving teachings and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect and that to me implies all the children of God who've surrendered their hearts to the I am presence of God within Thursday morning we commune with the angel of water saying angel of water enter my blood and give the water of life to my whole body. As you say this, you contemplate the waters of earth in rain, rivers, lakes, seas, or anywhere, and the currents of the angel of water are left intensifying and directing the circulation of the blood. Interestingly, before we start morning prayer, as I came into the office, I have a little stand here with the Bible, the Christian Bible, although I do have other sacred texts like the Quran and the Bhagavista and some beautiful teachings from the Lord Buddha. But it was opened at Matthew 20, and it really struck me as I read the passage. It's only short, but I would like to read it to you. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 29 to 34, we read, As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd was following. Two blind men were sitting by the road, heard that Jesus was passing by, so they began to shout, Son of David! take pity on us. The crowd scolded them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted even more loudly, just like the Hillsborough families, but it took 27 years. Son of David, take pity on us. Take pity on us, sir. Look at the reverence as they afford Jesus the title, sir. And Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked them. 
Sir, they answered, we want you to give us our sight. Jesus had pity on them and touched their eyes. At once they were able to see and they followed him. What is that saying to your heart? So many of us repetitively ask God for the same thing over and over and over. And those who've joined us for prayer, be it with Sister Sue, Sister Eleanor or myself, you will have heard us say over and over and over again, name the issue once, bless it once, and release it to God once, and then step back and trust in God to deliver, and just keep saying thank you. For those words, thank you God, are saying something very positive, that I trust in you God, to answer my prayer. But do you keep on asking for the same thing over and over? Or do you just leave it with God and trust even in your darkest hour? And trust me, I've had quite a few of them recently with health issues where sometimes the head kicks in and fear kicks in. And having been a nurse for 38 years, sometimes it doesn't pay to have all that experience behind you because you start breaking things down and then you can worry unnecessarily. Let us play this beautiful track for you by Marilla. Hover over me. Just allow your hearts hear the words.
to be faithful when our prayers are being answered and everything is going well but what do we do when God hides his face I'm sure we've all experienced this situation in Isaiah 45 verse 15 we read you are a God that hides thyself O God of Israel so we have the perplexity of unanswered prayer it is one of the mysterious ways of God because we then read in Mark 11 verse 24 I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours we read of the long dreadful silences and periods of darkness throughout the Bible we recall Abraham's vision that he would father a great nation for 25 years that vision seemed doomed until his son was born then God asked him to sacrifice him as a burnt offering. There was Joseph, who heard from God, but landed at the bottom of a well, and later in an Egyptian dungeon for trying to follow that guidance. Moses, God's hand-picked liberator of the Hebrew people, hid in the desert for 40 years, hunted by Pharaoh's security guards. And of course David, the fugitive, anointed king at God's command and then spent the next decade dodging spears and sleeping in caves. We are baffled by this pattern of divine guidance. First, there's a clear message which was followed by a long silence and then in each case a dreadful time of testing as in the trials of Job. In the New Testament Hebrews records the trials that may befall God's faithful people. Torture, floggings, stonings, etc. The saints become saints by managing to hold on to the conviction that things are not as they appear and that the unseen world is as solid and trustworthy as the visible world around them. They all tell us that God deserves our trust even when it looks as if the world is caving in. We look at the trials of Jesus, how he prayed. He spent 40 days in the wilderness, hungry and thirsty. He had to wrestle with temptation. He had to pray in order to meet the pain and desolation that was to come. He shows us what to do in times of bitterness and desolation. Hang on in there. None of us has ever undergone anything that God himself has not gone through. The prayers of Jesus in the Gospels are already teaching us how to pray. His prayer to his Father is the path of faith, hope and charity. But the Gospels also give us Jesus' explicit teaching on prayer. Like a wise teacher, he takes hold of us where we are and leads us progressively towards the Father. After addressing the crowds following him, Jesus builds on what they already know of prayer from the Old Covenant, and he opens them to the newness of the coming kingdom. Then he reveals this newness to them in parables. Finally, he will speak openly of the Father and the Holy Spirit to his disciples, who will be the teachers of prayer in his church. From the Sermon on the Mount onwards, Jesus insists on conversion of the heart. Once committed to conversion, the heart learns to pray in faith, just as Jesus prays to the Father and gives thanks before receiving his gifts. So he teaches us boldness. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you receive it and it will be yours. Such is the power of prayer and faith that does not doubt. We are told all things are possible to him who believes. The lack of faith of his own neighbors and the little faith of his own disciples saddens Jesus and he is struck with admiration of the great faith of the Roman centurion 
and the Canaanite woman. Scripture shows us time and time again that persistence in prayer pays off. The man who kept knocking at the door at midnight looking for bread. Unbelievably, he got it. The woman with the hemorrhage who was bold enough to touch Jesus, knowing that in doing so, according to Jewish law, she would make Jesus unclean, which is why she was so afraid when Jesus asked to touch me. She had done a terrible thing, but Jesus did not rebuke her. Instead, he praised her faith, saying as he did so many times before, your faith has made you whole. He is showing us faith and persistence are necessary in prayer. Jesus is constrained by our lack of faith. When we have faith in him, then he is powerful and able to do great things for us. Some people think of God as a God of threats rather than a God of promises. We read in the writings of Father Jean-Baptiste Saint-Jour that God is more ready to give than we are ready to ask. He says, it is a strange fact that although Jesus repeatedly and solemnly promised to answer our prayers, most Christians are continually complaining that he does not do so. We can't say that it's because of the things we ask for, since Jesus included everything in his promise, all things, whatever you shall ask. Nor can we say it's our unworthiness. His promise extended to everyone without exception. Whosoever asks shall receive. Why is it then that so many of our prayers remain unanswered? Is it because we are never satisfied and make constant demands on God and so annoy Him? The answer is just the opposite. The only reason we obtain so little from God is because we ask for so little and we are not insistent enough. Scripture tells us, pray without ceasing. Unanswered prayers can leave us feeling confused. We have to tell God exactly what we want, regardless of how impossible it may sound. Praying for peace all over the world, for instance, may appear to many as a forlorn dream. But we want this, and so does God. God does very little on earth without our cooperation. He invites us to ask plainly for what we need. However, we should pray for things in their proper order. In scripture we read, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all things shall be given to you besides. Seeking God means loving Him. Our love means more than we can ever imagine to God. When Jesus was asked what was the most important commandment, He replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. In those few words, he summed up what God wants most from us. Our most treasured gift to him is our love. We have a place in the heart of God that no one else in the whole world has. God knows us and calls us by our name. If we have sickness, then it will serve him. Sickness or sorrow may be necessary causes of some great end which we cannot see. But we will see everything clearly in the next life and we will be thrilled to know that we have helped God and served Him. God assures us there is a place of refuge from fear and confusion. We read in Psalm 4, Now I shall lie down in peace, since you alone, Yahweh, make me rest secure. Wasn't that powerful? For me, Marilla hit every button, pressed every button there to reawaken within our hearts that we are called to be a people of prayer, that we are called to surrender our heart to a loving God, and we are invited every second of every minute of every waking hour to ask of God for our needs, but only once and then celebrate the gift being answered and given by saying, thank you, God. O loving Christ, who, who died upon the tree of life, each day and each night, I remember your love in my lying down and in my rising up, in life and in death, 
You are my health. You are my peace. Each day and each night, I remember your forgiveness. Bestowed on me so gently and generously, each day and each night, may I be fuller in love with you. And now we come to our morning intercessions, where we bring the needs of one another, the needs of the world, the needs of the whole family of God, regardless of their color, their creed, their lifestyle choice, or their religious belief. Life, be in my speech, truth in what I say, the love Christ Jesus gave, be filling every heart for me, the love Christ Jesus gave, be filling me for everyone. Let us pray now for this coming day and to follow Christ most closely. So let us be still and let us feel the love of Christ. Let us listen to his word for he is present here with us. He's calling us to come to share our burdens and leave them with him in love. This morning we pray from a loving heart for our dear sisters Eleanor and Elizabeth, especially dear Elizabeth, who's mom to Larry and who has been there for Larry from the moment he was born to the present day. And though things have not quite worked out for Larry because of his own childhood experiences from a rather abusive, manipulative father, and whose actions are as a result of all of that. We pray for him and Kelly, his partner. But we pray for dear Elizabeth, who must be struggling and trying to balance those roles of being a mom and a bride of Christ, a follower of Jesus, and torn. And there's poor sister Eleanor trying to support all of them and going under with the pressure. So today, we lift all four of these children of God dear to our heart and we say, Lord Jesus, you know their needs better than we. Thank you for taking care of them. Thank you for loving them. And thank you that their hearts will be filled with your love, your mercy and compassion. Amen. We pray, we pray with dear Jan for all her needs and her family and that there will be great celebrations when their friends come from Canada at the weekend. We pray for dear sister Sue and all her family, especially for Beth and Sarah, for James, and not forgetting dear Paul, a good man, and for his son Ben, to make contact with his dad. We pray for all the members of our community past and present, we remember today those who've supported us through prayer. We pray for our dear friend, Brother Paul of the Order of Franciscan Hermits, who would love to be with us, but because of the time difference of eight hours, he really needs his rest. But we pray for all the men and women of all faiths who've dedicated their lives to God, to the source, the I Am Presence, the Creator, the Supreme Being. And we pray for a lovely young man who's coming to stop with us now for a while, called Paul, a beautiful Buddhist friend who needs some respite. We pray for Paul. But we also pray for those who are struggling in their belief and who are torn by what their head is telling them and what their heart is trying to say. And with Jan, we remember all those on our prayer lists. And yes, there are many, many, many requests, but too many to mention here. So we give them to God and we say, thank you, God, for world peace. And with Sister Sue, ah, oh, thank you, praying for me. I welcome prayer, I really do. 
I guess on a human level, I'm worrying about next week when I have my CAT scan. But we bless it, we send it love, and what will be will be because we are in God's care. So we pray for this beautiful day and we remember those children of God of different faiths who are struggling in mind, in body and spirit for all our religious leaders to come together and walk the talk with the children of God. For our political leaders, our politicians, we pray for them that they will honour their commitment to truth, to integrity, and not try and conceive the truth, as some have done recently, towards the Hillsborough families when it came out that they had lied on oaths. But in the end, God's triumph, God triumphed over adversity and he blessed his people and congratulated them on their 27 years of persistent courage by revealing to them the truth. And there is a saying, isn't there? Your sins will find you out. And the sins of those who should have known better, who should have told the truth, were found out. So we celebrate. So now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother, God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will, not ours, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here today and all those who may have remembered here our daily bread. Forgive us our foibles. Forgive us our agendas the times when we've procrastinated, for the times when we've allowed fear and negativity, anxiety and worry eat away at our heart, your voice, your peace. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of negativity, despair and evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our closing prayer. Is a Celtic prayer. Bless to us, O God, the earth beneath our feet. Bless to us, O God, the path on which I go, we go. Bless to us, O God, the people whom we meet. O God, of all gods, bless to us our life. And with this light, we bless you. And we ask Jesus, the cosmic Christ, our brother, our teacher, our mentor, the Son of God, to empower you now. Surrender your heart and all that may be troubling you by naming it, blessing it and releasing it and leaving it with God and say thank you. Amen. Namaste, shalom and shalab, accept bonum. Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of our God reawaken within your heart that inner voice, the voice of a loving God who's calling you today to listen, to be still, and to celebrate your divinity as a co creator of God. Have a beautiful day, dear friends. Enjoy the snow and the sun. And for those who are about to retire to rest, sleep well. Till we meet again, God bless you. Peace.